co-created by um, Luca Guadagnino who directed uh, Call Me By Your Name. And this is uh, very similar as it's set um, in Italy, follows well, two young people in this case. The story here is seen through the eyes of two 14-year-olds. Uh, the first episode centers around uh, Jack Dylan Grazer's Fraser Wilson, who uh, moves uh, with his two mums uh, from a military base in New York to a, a military base in Shiogia in Italy. Um, mm -hmm. Both of his mothers are in the military. Uh, one is uh, Sarah Wilson, who's played by Chloe Savigny. She is a colonel who's going to become the new uh, commander on the base. Um, his other mother is Maggie, played by Alice Braga, who is a major, so she's of a lesser rank. The first episode is mainly Fraser getting to use with his surroundings, being sort of intrigued by the other young people on the base. We, we believe he is also in a homosexual relationship with someone back in New York. Um, he is intrigued by his neighbour, uh, Caitlin, uh, who is the daughter of another... I, I don't understand the ranks in the American military. Really, I don't know why, Matt. We've been through another, this time another, and time again. Another senior uh, army yeah. bod, let's just say. And the first episode ends really with him following Caitlin and learning that she's sort of got a double identity. She's struggling with her gender and she likes to be known by the name Harper, which is odd because we had a Harper last week yeah, in history. Yeah, we had never had a Harper in a drama then two come along at the same time. So then the second episode, you see the events of the first episode, but this time through the eyes of Caitlin slash Harper and her struggles. You know, you learn about her brother wanting almost to convert to being Islamic and sort of her feelings about, you know, where she is in the world, her sexuality, things like that. And those are the main themes, I think, you know, this malaise of youth sexuality gender identity what it means to be like a military child as well and have there's the scene where um fraser goes around the supermarket with um the character played by martin scorsese's daughter uh Brittany, who um, says you know supermarkets on military bases are the same anywhere you go in the world and again that's all about that sort of uh, you know, the, the theme of identity runs quite strongly throughout mm. certainly these first two episodes that we watched. Uh, Luke will now demonstrate why he's an old fuddy-duddy. Well, can we have a disagreement without you telling me I'm wrong? I'd appreciate that. <laughs> I didn't really? say you were wrong. I just said you were an old man. <laughs> okay. I didn't like this, and I'll tell you for why. I think when a lot of filmmakers get, get given the opportunity to make a TV show, they see it as just a long film. Too meandering, too slow. I thought particularly Frasier was the most insufferable lead character I've ever had the misfortune to spend any time with. He doesn't have a lot of dialogue in this first episode. As you say, he's just walking through this military base trying to get the lay of the land and listening to his iPod. And But there's, there's a sequence in the middle where, somewhat out of nowhere, he slaps his mother, Chloe Sauvigny, really sort of aggressively and... and you just think this is a colonel in the in the army she's not going to take that and they have a really bizarre relationship and while some may find that interesting i just found it really off-putting and i just found it him insufferable he was just a little brat that i didn't want to spend any time with i did find it very interesting that i'd never seen anything set on a military base i like the fact that all these american kids had a grasp of italian and i like the setting but these two leads are just not interesting people for me. I found it so dull and so boring. I, the point of a first episode is to get me to care and get me to want to continue. And this just didn't for me. And I appreciate Call Me By Your Name from all I've heard about it. I've not seen it. It does a very similar thing where it's, it's all about atmosphere. And then it builds to this crescendo. But I don't see this building. I just think it's all about let's bask in these beautiful uh, shots of Italy, and it is, but it's not, in my eyes, it's not a TV show, it's a drawn out long film with characters I don't want to spend any time with. It was an introduction, the first episode. Yeah, but I don't need a two hour setup. I don't, yeah, but I just don't. introducing each, you know, so the two main characters, they spent an hour introducing, and TV shows have done that in the past, 
where they have spent an hour introducing one character. You know, Skins did it. And I and I disagree entirely with saying that this is an eight hour film. These felt very episodic, you know. No, no. And I think you've got a real sort of thing about film directors coming to TV and that and again, like, you know, for example, Peaky Blinders, that was a film director coming to TV. That wasn't a chop you know, you really enjoy that. That's not a chopped up film. That is very much a generalization that you're making. And I think for example, the first episode, you know, him coming to the military base, that was the introduction. It ended with his, we, you know, with him discovering about uh, Caitlin's double identity. That was an end. And we got him struggling to fit in in this new base. And that was the middle. It was very episodic. And I don't know why, why you didn't no. find it was. Even if it was not, as I see it, a chopped up film, these people were obnoxious. Well, particularly Frasier was obnoxious. Yeah. And Fraser, I have to Fraser. finish. I have to finish an episode going. I want, I care about the journey. I, I'm interested in them. I don't necessarily have to like them. The people on Succession, for example, are properly awful people that you would hate to be stuck in a room with. But there's something intriguing about them and funny about them, and you sort of find them endearing, even though you know how awful I, they and are. I, Here, I, I just want to. Yeah, I would it. agree with. I would agree with you about Fraser. You know, he is. A bra he is a bit of a brat, but I think it's the reason why he's like that. You know, the, that is his outward presentation, and he is almost someone who's got that self-loathing about him. And I, I sort of got that, you know, and you did see some level of his insecurities there as well, you know, when he was on his own. And I do get, you know, the meandering nature of it to an extent where you're following these characters around, but I was intrigued by them and their story and... You know, as you say, that this odd relationship between Fraser and Sarah and the struggles that, that Caitlin's have. Do you, see, I'm surprised you didn't like Caitlin. What were your issues there with her? Because no, just... I get why you didn't like. I I do get why you didn't like Fraser, but I don't think he's a character that you're initially, you know, meant no. to particularly like you're meant to be sort of intrigued by his story and his background and who is it he's talking to on the phone at home what is he going to do now he's found out you know about this double identity of Caitlin and Harper I thought you would like you know and, and these are both quite you know young actors I know Jack Dylan Grazer um, has been in in films before I don't think Jordan Christine no, it's her first, it's her is, first is her, and they are only you know they're both only 17 and so they've got sort of age-appropriate actors playing these characters which I appreciate and I and I was more drawn into that second episode and I think now we've sort of got to the point where we sort of know where we are and it may have taken a little bit longer, but that didn't bother me. You know, I felt like I was there with them because of the way it was shot, because of the way it was sort of, you know, you, you got swept along by these sequences where you were just listening to music and watching the world from the character's eyes. And I think that's where you get to know the characters through watching the world through their eyes. I think you may have felt a little bit more alienated from it, perhaps than I did, but I sort of got swept up in this world and swept up certainly with these two characters. If if you if if it's one where you can bathe yourself in the warm Italian sunshine and the atmosphere and you don't worry about nothing particularly going on, then I think you can get, as you said, swept up in the atmosphere. I didn't like them and I didn't care about them. Why, why didn't you like Caitlin though? You haven't explained that to me. Well, you said you didn't I just, like that. Because, because the problem is most of the characters, particularly in the second episode, they don't really say much. So you have to go off, you know, the little that they do say. If you're just looking for the dialogue to guide you, then you are going to, you know, not all programs and not all it characters. Spends a lot, it spends a lot of time just showing you the beautiful scenery and showing you but, looks on people's faces. And... Yeah, but that should get you, you know, the looks on people's faces should communicate as much about the characters as the dialogue does. Not all, you know, forms of media stories you have, especially like a visual medium like TV, you know, if there is an actor there emoting, even if they're not saying much, they are communicating that character and I think the actress here did a, a very good job at communicating the character even if, you know, she didn't say much. But it, it, I just found it so dull. I liked the, the, the 
being on this base, that was a new setting I'd never seen before. I obviously knew people from from abroad work, worked and lived on Navy Army bases, never seen it, never known what their life is like. So that side was interesting and showed me something I'd never even considered before. But the people within it were so dull. His his mothers were 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 just these odd people that they, he had spats with that you couldn't quite get a handle on. I just it was very very long. You've become the grumpy old man of this podcast, I think, in the last two weeks. I had to be one of but, it. You know, I I don't really know because you used to like programs that were slow and you know made you work for things. And both the Queen's Gambit and We Are Who We Are both have those elements to them and you know for me i i do get your criticisms about fraser but that is the character at the end of the day and i i i feel that this is something that does make you work for understanding what these people are doing through more of the body language and you know rather than the dialogue but normal people did a similar thing even though you might have liked those characters a little bit more which i do get again though i i completely disagree with you with what you're saying about this being a filmmaker it's a chopped up film both of these had very clear beginnings and ends you know and the fact that the the bulk of the episode didn't have any dialogue that does not mean that it's just because it's a filmmaker that's the decision that was made and that that's how they're communicating how the characters are feeling